Welcome to Kensho Quest. I'm going to show the minimal travel capsule wardrobe that I'll be packing for our family's upcoming trip to Japan. We'll be headed to Japan for three months. First, in the winter time, we're going to start up north in Hokkaido to attend the Sapporo Snow Festival. Then as it gets a bit later in the springtime, in April, we'll head to Tokyo for the Sakura Cherry Blossoms. I'm really excited because it will be my first time to see the cherry blossoms in bloom in Japan. I will pack outfits that work both for freezing cold, snowy weather and also cool, rainy springtime weather. For the winter temperatures, I'm expecting it to get down to about negative 8 Celsius or 17 degrees Fahrenheit. And in the springtime, I'm expecting that it'll be around the 60s Fahrenheit, so maybe up to about 20 degrees Celsius. I need to choose versatile, multi-season clothing, but I also need to pack as minimally as I can. I'm hoping that we can fit the whole family of five's clothing and toiletries into two rolling carry-on sized suitcases. Then we will have one bigger checked suitcase for household items since we are going to be staying three months. This will be our family's second winter trip to Hokkaido, Japan. Last winter we took our kids so they could experience snow for the very first time. So this is my second time packing for these conditions. Some of these clothing pieces I brought on our previous trip. A couple of them, like what I'm wearing right now, I just purchased recently. And a few pieces I was gifted for some upcoming merino wool travel clothing reviews I'll be doing. Almost everything I'm packing is made of wool, with the exception of my rain jacket and my swimming suit. They're not necessarily 100% wool fibers, there might be some nylon or spandex mixed in. But we'll get back to that in a little bit about why I'm packing wool. I'm packing 12 staple pieces, plus pajamas, accessories, and two pairs of shoes. The basis of each of my three outfits is either a skirt or a dress. I'm going to bring one skirt and two dresses. I know these clothes don't look very wintry, but you'll see in a minute how it all comes together. The skirt is nice and compact to pack. This is my Truly Caress dress. I've been wearing for a couple years now. I showed it in my previous minimalist travel capsule wardrobe video. This one is a new addition to my wardrobe. I'm really excited to try it. It's by Appalachian Gear Company, and this one is actually made out of 80% alpaca fiber and 20% tensile. Next, I have three long sleeves. So it's two long sleeve shirts and one long sleeve, very thin merino wool jersey cardigan. My color palette has a lot of navy blue, dark teal, and black in it. So even though I'm showing these as three outfits, they could be recombined in a lot of different combinations. This cardigan is one of my favorite pieces in my travel wardrobe. It's by Ibex, but unfortunately it's been discontinued and I'll probably have to replace it pretty soon. It's starting to show some wear and tear after six years. So that's one, two, three long sleeve shirts. The next portion of each outfit is a pair of merino wool leggings. And these are all thick, warm wool leggings the main flaw in my wardrobe last time around is I just did not have thick enough leggings with me. I had two pretty thin pairs that I ended up layering, but it still didn't cut it when it was negative seven degrees Celsius and breezy. If you're curious about leggings and wanna get all the details, I will be doing an upcoming comparison review that includes these plus three other brands. So please subscribe if you're interested in that. I will wear this dress and these leggings as my travel day outfit, along with my boots on the airplane, and I'll be packing the rest. The next three pieces that I consider to be part of my core 12 pieces are my mid-layer hoodie sweater and my two jackets. I have a poofy jacket that's a nylon shell and it's filled with wool as the insulation, and then I have a rain jacket that is just a thin rain jacket, no insulation or anything. I went with that option because that means I can also wear it in warmer climates when I just need it to protect from rain. But I can pair these together and use them in lieu of a real winter coat. This is the same layering system that I use for my kids' travel wardrobes, and they got a lot of use out of their rain jackets last time around in Japan. We were there in spring and then going into summertime, and it rained a lot, so it was really good that they had rain jackets. The rain jacket functions as both a windproof and waterproof layer. So when the wind is blowing, it can really chill you if you don't have something to stop the wind. Also, if the snow starts to melt, since this is waterproof, it'll prevent the puffy jacket underneath from getting wet. 
but it is also somewhat breathable so that you don't just trap sweat underneath all your layers. Our family really considers a hoodie sweater to be an essential in a travel wardrobe. We each have one. We wear it as part of our travel day outfit, so that could be on an airplane, a train, anything that's going to be super air conditioned. Some of the shorter flights are not so cold, but long haul flights tend to be very cold. So I like to have the hood to cover my ears in case the air is blowing on my ears. This jacket has a nice collar that I can stand up and snap like this. So that way it's protecting my neck as well. A puffy jacket like this is the perfect type of thing to pack into a compression packing cube because when it's all fluffed out, it takes up a lot of space, but it can really compress down and not take up too much room. Both George and I got our puffy jackets about six years ago when we were in Japan in the fall and it was really cooling off and we needed something warmer than what we had in our travel wardrobes. And ever since then, we've been carrying them with us, but we just carry it in a compression packing cube so it doesn't take up too much room in our luggage. This one's by Tripped. So this is at the full size. And then I use the second zipper here to compress it down. Compression packing cubes are really good for winter clothes that tend to be more fluffy and bulky try to make things not take up too much space. Overall, I think this system takes up less room than an actual winter coat that's both insulated and waterproof. And we can get so much more use out of this because we can use different pieces. We use our hoodies quite often. We can also use our rain jackets. And this puppy jacket is just when we are somewhere really cold in the fall or the winter. I actually purchased this North Face rain jacket at Costco in Hokkaido the last time that we were there, because at that point I didn't have a waterproof layer in my travel wardrobe. I did used to carry around like those plastic rain ponchos or rain jackets. Those are really just a single use disposable item. I do prefer having a nice rain jacket, especially we are often in places that rain a lot. These pieces are a bit bulky, so I'm not packing them in with the rest of my clothes. And also I want to have easy access to them. Like I've said, I would wear the hoodie on the airplane, so maybe put it on once we get to the airport but before we get on our flight. And then when we arrive, I would wanna have access right away to my outer layers because it might be really cold. We'll be flying from hot tropical weather and then flying in to cold winter weather, even to leave the airport and go to our accommodations. We may need to put on our jackets. I have some additional items that I didn't count as part of the 12 basic items. I have two merino wool camisoles. And I have this cashmere sweater that I got at Uniqlo on our last winter trip, and I wear that as pajamas. So for pajamas, I can wear one of these camisoles and then this over. And for the bottom portion, I'll just wear a clean pair of leggings that I'm planning to wear out and about the next day. My main winter accessories are four pairs of wool socks, one pair of mittens, and a thin beanie hat. One hack if you don't own a lot of warm clothes is to choose long accessories. I'm a big fan of knee-high socks because they provide an extra layer on my legs to help keep my legs warm. They're also great for wearing on the airplane. I always like to keep one pair of wool socks in my personal item that I bring on the airplane so I can still be warm even if the air conditioning is cranked up. Also, my Bumby wool mittens have these arm warmers attached. So this both adds an extra layer of warmth to my forearm here underneath my shirts, but it also makes it easy for me to take on and off my mittens. So if I need to access my phone or use it, I can get to my fingers pretty easily. I'm quite fortunate that I already have quite a few merino wool bras and underwear. So I'm just choosing the thicker, warmer ones for this winter trip. This one is by Humbird Wool, it's quite warm. I have some by Yawning Mama. She now only offers sewing patterns, so if you want to sew your own, that's an option. And this one's also by Yawning Mama and it's a swimsuit bikini top. We might be going to some onsen hot springs, so even though it'll be cold winter, I do wanna have a swimsuit along. That's a rule I learned as a kid, is no matter where you're going, no matter what the climate, always bring a swimsuit. This is a nice thick pair of wool underwear from Rainbow Waters. That works really nice in the winter. And I also like packing boy shorts style underwear for more full coverage. It can help keep you a bit warmer. Just getting any extra warmth even from your underwear. And a pair of swim shorts to go with the swim top. 
These could be used as backup bra and underwear if I were to run out and need a clean pair. I will wear my boots on the airplane and then pack this other pair of shoes. And I have everything I need to take me comfortably from winter into spring. Each of the three outfits I'm packing can be worn in any season. The skirt and dresses for hot summer weather. Then add a long sleeve shirt and leggings for cooler fall or spring. This is my base layer that's closest to my skin. Switch to boots, add accessories, and pile on the layers for cold, snowy winter. I can use whichever combination of sweater and jackets makes sense for the particular day's weather and the activities we'll be doing. Most days, I would start with my hoodie as my mid-layer. I could skip it and go straight to my puffy jacket that serves as my insulating layer if it's not as cold that day. Mittens to keep my hands warm and a thin beanie hat on my head. I can also add my rain jacket for situations that call for a waterproof and windproof layer. This is my main non-wool item in my wardrobe. A leather jacket would be a natural option if you want something that's water repellent. Why wool? Why am I packing mostly clothing made out of wool? If you're new here, I am a huge fan of wool. I love that it's a natural fiber, so it's renewable and biodegradable. It's also soft and comfortable to wear. Thin merino wool pieces are also compact, making them easy to pack. Our family is traveling long term and we normally travel in hot, tropical, humid weather. I've found that merino wool is my favorite type of clothing to wear in these conditions. I started out with the synthetics, didn't like how suffocating and stinky those were. Then I switched to cotton. Specifically, lightweight Pima cotton can be somewhat more comfortable. But after a long day out sightseeing in the hot, humid weather, I was sometimes drenched with sweat. My cotton t-shirt, my bra, it would just all be wet. So I was always looking for a better alternative. And that's how I stumbled upon merino wool. It's breathable, so it can actually let the sweat moisture evaporate away from your skin and help keep you cool. Or it can keep you warm in cold weather. Also, wool continues to insulate even if it gets wet. This is in contrast to cotton. If you're wearing cotton clothes and they get wet from sweat, from melting snow, from rain, then you can end up getting really cold and losing a lot of body heat. But with wool, even if it gets wet, it can still keep you warm. Wool is also naturally somewhat water repellent and you can increase that by adding some lanolin or sheep grease back to your wool. But that means that I can wear these wool leggings even as my outer layer in the snow. I have not personally done this yet, but I will be on this trip. On our previous trip, my kids wore their heavyweight wool pants by Truly Caris out in the snow. And what would happen is the snow would stick to their legs. They'd look kind of fluffy and white, but then as it melted off, it would just run right off the pants without actually getting their wool pants wet. If they did get a little damp, we'd just hang them on a chair when we got back to our Airbnb and they'd be fine to wear again the next day. I'm personally super excited to get to experiment with having natural wool snow pants. The one exception is if it was really windy and chilly, icy cold wind, then I might want traditional waterproof pants. Merino refers to a specific breed of sheep. They have especially soft wool, so it's comfortable to wear against the skin, especially if you choose a really thin micron fiber. Alpaca is also comfortable too. This is a bit more soft and fluffy and kind of furry than my merino wool pieces. Another thing that I like about merino wool clothing is it makes the laundry easy for me while I'm traveling because I'm doing laundry for the whole family. It's pretty easy to wash. I usually machine wash it on cold water and then for detergent I will use either unicorn fiber wash or for extra deep clean unicorn beyond clean. These are super concentrated so it only requires one squirt Per load of laundry so the 16 ounce bottle can easily last me for a whole three months trip washing the whole family's clothes. After I wash on cold in the machine then I'll lay flat to dry or hang up to dry. Most places in Japan have somewhere set up where you can hang dry your laundry and since the air is so dry in the winter up north in Hokkaido our clothes were always dry by the next morning. Even the really heavyweight wool pants they dried overnight. I can bring a bigger bottle like this in a checked suitcase. And then I have some little sample size wool wash items like some Euclid that if I want to bring something in my carry-on bag, I can bring this. Or if we are going by train and shipping our bigger suitcase and won't see it for a couple days, then I have something with me. 
I also have part of a bar of Bumby stain remover stick in here. So I'm ready. If I had to, I could also use these and hand wash in the sink. Wool clothing is much more expensive than synthetic clothing, which is basically made out of plastic. For wool, there's a lot more involved in raising the animals, shearing them, and turning that fiber into fabric. So yes, if you were to start from scratch and create a whole wardrobe like this, it would be a big upfront investment. Instead, what I have done is I have gathered pieces gradually over time. Quite a few pieces are from six years ago when we were in Japan for the fall time. For our last trip, what I made sure is that each family member at least had one outfit they could wear out in the snow. So my kids were pretty much wearing the same outfit every day, but that worked, kept them warm. To give you an idea of how much stuff this is, I could pack it all into this Lily Jade bag. This is their Sarah Grace. It's nice and roomy. It can be worn as a tote bag. I took off the crossbody strap to lighten it a bit. It can also be worn as a backpack and it has a trolley sleeve. I'm so glad to finally have a bag with a trolley sleeve on it. This is one option that I could pack it in here. In reality, I probably won't do it this way because then I wouldn't be able to use this bag for things like my laptop and important documents. And in this video, I'm just showing you my personal winter travel wardrobe, but in reality, I will also be packing clothes for my three kids plus my husband. So it's more about seeing how everybody's clothes all pack up together. The most efficient way to be able to lug our stuff around, get onto the airplane and also around the train stations in Japan, being that we have three young kids and the younger two, they don't really help with pulling a suitcase or anything. So family of five, but two adults moving around all of our luggage. If you're like us and flying airlines that do weigh your bags just for fun, I'm gonna see how much this all weighs. Kg about seven and a half. On our first flight, our carry-on bags are allowed to be 10 kg per person, but then when we fly within Japan, we'll only be allowed seven kg per person. That's one option just to give you an idea of how much I'm bringing. More likely, I will be packing my belongings into a rolling carry-on suitcase, since I also have to pack the rest of the family's belongings as well. My clothes, not counting my outerwear, can fit in one half of the suitcase, and then I have room on the other side for things like my insulated tumbler, my wool blanket, toiletries bag, first aid kit, and a pouch where I keep some of my essentials that I keep in my day pack. There you have it. Even if you're traveling to a cold, snowy destination, you can still pack minimally and fit all of your clothes in a small space. Our family is traveling long-term, and Japan is one of our favorite destinations. So if you're dreaming of going to Japan, please subscribe. We'll be sharing more packing tips and travel inspiration.